If you love British basketball, then you're in luck. Saturday is double bubble. The matinee performance is Sheffield versus Surrey. The Sharks bit a chunk out of Phoenix last week and the Scorchers are yet to warm up. They're looking for their first win of this campaign. Bringing the heat is Dan Routledge and Ant Rowe. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Yes, welcome to the Surrey Sports Park where they're uh, just introducing the uh, team so the lights are down. Uh, here at the sports park and it's one of those places where it's usually very atmospheric the crowd really gets behind them they didn't see too many wins last year but they kept coming back for more they did it that was a brutal four and 32 record last year but the fans remain faithful they come up on the numbers so i think an, a win early in the season would do them the world of good and instill the optimism in the group well let's have a look at the starting fives for uh, tonight's game starting with the sorry scorchers and it was almost a bit of a pre-season against London and then they have a week off and it, it's like it starts for real here tonight and obviously led by the veteran point guard Justin Robinson. Yeah start stop uh, sort of season so far and they've only got the benchmark against the London Lions but what you've got in the starting lineup here you've got three individuals Robinson, Jameson and Wang that have British basketball league experience which could be pivotal. And speaking of experience at the other end of the floor the Sharks have Plenty of that as well. Cook, Retino, uh, back multiple years. Ramsey and Pipkins coming back from last season as well. If consistency is key, then the Sheffield Sharks are in a pretty good position. They'll start in Bennett Cook as well. I like that. They can go inside to him for some high percentage shots. Well, Justin Robinson was out injured last year. He's working his way back. How he goes is how the Surrey Scorchers will go this season, surely. A former two-time MVP of the British Basketball League, 35 years old now, Dan, but he was out whole of last year, so it's a comeback season for him. He's won titles in this game. He knows what it takes. He needs to instill that winning mentality with his group. And at the other end of the floor, Jalen Pipkins had a few months in, uh, but can he expand his game this season round? We think he can. We'll find out when the game begins right after this break. Everyone knows you deserve it. Yeah. They must be blind like curtains, certain. Anything you've got, you've earned it. Earned it. Sky is the limit, it's reasonable. Yeah. Look at the height, it's achievable. Yeah. Can't stop me, I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. Yeah. Every time they want to clash, I'm unbeatable. Chunks is running out of stock. And we're running out of the clock. Watch and learn how many years been working for my son. Stay on your feet. Let me be put on a poster. Nah. Do a step like roller coaster. Oh. This one right here for the coach. Let's take the stay higher. Higher than you ever been. Stand tall like Everest. I mean, higher. You ain't got to settle in. Go places they never been. We go higher. No stop. Take it to the top even when the ball drops. My man. We are basketball. Team is everything. We fight till the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. We've seen this in two decades. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are British basketball.
Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. We have the Surrey Scorchers against the Sheffield Sharks right about to tip off Dan Ratledge and Ant Row with you. And the Sheffield Sharks obviously uh, picking up a good win uh, last week, getting their first one on the board. Obviously, with their new arena about to open, they're playing their first few games on the road. Yeah, it's a lot going on for the Sheffield Sharks, and even in the short term, this is a really big weekend for them. Surrey Scorchers here, and they go to again another game on the, on the road against Plymouth. So these, this is a weekend that Atiba Lions will feel that he will want to be 2-0. And Lloyd Gardner there talking to Mark Dunning himself, a former British Basketball League coach at Worthing and Thames Valley and I think Hemel as well back in the day, assisting Lloyd this year, bringing his vast experience. And well, there aren't too many around the British Basketball League with more experience than Atiba Lions. And what you know with Atiba is his team will play hard, they'll be good defensively, and they won't beat themselves. Yeah, and there's no you know, coincidence that every single year the Sharks seem to surpass expectations, and that's because Coach Atiba Lions understands what it takes to be successful in this league. Well, the two teams are out there, and uh, the referees are ready as well. So the ball will go up, and we will get things underway. And it will be the Scorchers who get the first possession of the game. Here's Robinson. Around the screen, good. Looking for some room in the lane. It's not really much. A difficult shot. Wang gets his hands on it, but uh, can't finish. No, a difficult shot there. Turn around from, from Cam Holden, but you've got players there crashing the board. You see Paddy and Wang trying to secure the offensive rebound, unsuccessful on that occasion. Pipkins looking inside. Sheffield often when Cook starts, go to him early and try and establish him. He's got so many moves in the low post, unable to convert that one at Jameson, as I'm sure we'll say many times tonight, with the defensive rebound. <laughs> That's what he does, Dan, an incredible rebounder. He has been in college and he's translated that to the pro game. Mohammed driving to the basket, and there he is at the offensive end, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. Well, he's a player that, you know, regardless of how well he's shooting, he will get his double-digit rebounds, and that's what I think you'd want if you're Coach Lloyd Gardner. You'd want Jameson to be able to convert some of these put-back finishes here, and look, difficult play there, but he's a player big enough and strong enough to be able to absorb that contact and finish the play. He's a was about a 65, 66% free throw shooter in his first spell with Surrey. Coming back the second time around, but he was a tremendous rebounder, as you will have noticed. We have a slight technical issue with the clock. So we have got the shot on it there. We'll keep you posted as well. Jameson gets the first points on the board, or point on the board. Inside to Retino, who has an open lane to the basket. That's way too easy. Oh, it was indeed, and it just sort of opened up from him. Retino, good recognition there to see that. Quick turn and relatively easy layup for him. 2-1 the lead to the uh, Scorchers here. Robinson down the lane, finger rolls it in off the glass. Another encouraging sign there. I thought Robinson was excellent last game against London Lions in the opening stages of that game. Quick, you know, eight points he had. They're going to need for him to really be able to produce there throughout the whole game. He really came out of the blocks early against his former team. Pipkins late in the shot clock, dumping it down to Cook underneath, and he's uh, too good to allow get that close. Yeah, you can see James who didn't want to commit a foul there. It was quite a, a passive attempt to stop Bennett Cook there down low, who will feast off those areas in, in and around the basket. Here's Wang looking for room along the baseline, loses the handle. Sheffield in the open court. Nice pass, and Ramsey's on the end of it. They don't get much in transition, but that's a good sign for Atiba Lions. It's an excellent decision from Allen as well, and Ramsey running the floor converts the layup. Couldn't on to Robinson. Robinson in the key, has his pass deflected, and another chance for Sheffield to run, although the foul was called. First of all on Justin Robinson. 
first against the Scorchers. And 6 3 Sheffield lead. Apologies again for the lack of a scoreboard. We're working on it. Hopefully, we'll have that rectified shortly. Here's Allen. Again, getting all the way to the rim, and that's going to be two quick ones on Justin Robinson. Oh, and that's not what you'd want. We mentioned earlier you know, his ability to start games quickly and sort of a lead by example. It'll be interesting to see now, Coach Lloyd Gardner, how long he's going to want to play Justin Robinson in the first half with those two fouls. Well, no surprise he's going to sit down. Right now, Andrew Lawrence will check it. Not a bad replacement. <laughs> two, two top quality British guards, one replacing the other. Well, two former GB internationals, of course, and unfortunately for both, have had their injury struggles. Andrew Lawrence more so than the most in the game. So I know that Surrey Scorchers will want to see him fit and healthy and being as productive as possible in this campaign. Allen stretches the lead to seven points to three. We're three minutes into the opening quarter here at Surrey Sports Park. Jameson hands off to Wang. Time ticking down on the offense. Got to get a shot away. Well, the pass is way too high and out of bounds. It was. A, I thought Paddy Wang did the hard part, and that was stepping through the double team there. Because it's you can get caught in that corner there, and he like steps through in the pass. Way off the mark. Well, whether it was the pressure of the shot clock being counted down by the home fans, I'm not sure, but it was a mistake. Here's Pipkins in the corner. Up top to Retino, putting the ball on the floor. Retino getting all the way to the rim, but it doesn't drop for him. Well, it's the second time it's opened up for Retino, and Surrey Scorch is going to have to do a better job there of protecting the interior paint. Retino His should have finished that play. Here's Lawrence, gets his man up in the air. He's looking for somebody down in the low post. Jameson, again, with a little hook this time for two. Well, he was so deep there. Any player with the athleticism of Jameson's going to score there. Pipkins inside to Cook. Cook is able, oh, well, he's not, actually. I thought he was going to drop that one in for two. Foul call, Pipkins bumping and banging with Gooden. Seven points to three, Sheffield lead here. First foul on Pipkins. Here's Lawrence wide open for three. And one thing we've seen from Andrew Lawrence over the years is if you give him space, he'll knock it down. Yeah, and the best thing about him, he's not shy to make a big play. And yeah, the defense was way too lenient there on off that Andrew Lawrence coming off that screen. Very un Sheffield like. Here's uh, Cook trying to go to work and bumped and banged from in front and from behind. And it's Jameson who's called for the foul. Cook will sit down. Well, he's done a, he's done his job, and Bennett Cook's one of these players too that likes the physicality, likes the battle, and what that does is it gives his team a, a target man inside. Had a coyer in for Sheffield, hunting for uh, Surrey, and his first contribution to the game is to commit a foul. It's always more so dangerous, isn't it, for a big man picking up early fouls just because of the way you know, he's a six foot nine center. So you want to think he's going to be banging inside and trying to block shots. It's not an easy matchup because you can't sag off Adekoya like that. Adekoya, I mean, he's another one of the a number of shots players. They're quite versatile in their positioning. So I'm going to the basket unable to convert and I think it touched Hunt on the way out which is why it's a Sheffield ball yeah sorry I've got a few of those now they haven't been able to quite grab the offensive rebound the mentality's there though they're hunting the, the ball down and trying to 
crash the offensive glass. Here's Ramsey. Tough shot at the free throw line. Rims out. He's had an excellent start to the season as well, Darrell Ramsey. You always sometimes you feel the comfort levels increase when you bring back a player a second year and two players that are prime examples of that are Ramsey and Pipkins who are playing excellent basketball at present. Adekoya back to Allen. Round the screen, Adekoya rolls, Allen goes alone. All bobbles about, comes out to Gooden. Gooden looking to attack, Gooden getting all the way to the rim. And both teams have got to the rim with ease so far. Wow. Cam Gooden there does an excellent job of utilizing his quickness and his body and his balance. I mean, he's a he's a great scorer in college basketball. Division one scored 17 points a game senior year, so he's a guy that puts points on the board. Bettina with the space off the mark for three. Easy rebound for Lawrence. Hunt putting it on the floor now. Back to Lawrence. Extra pass. Finds Gooden in the corner. Off the mark. Allen eventually forced to retreat slightly. Down low to Adekoya. Sizes up his options. Allen now into the key. Tosses it up way off the mark. Wang comes away with it. Is not great so far. No, it's his hunt trying to improve Surrey's output. He does with his first score. You can really you see his length there. He caught the basketball just one large step. Used all of that six nine frame to lay the ball up. And Akoya trying to use his quickness to get past him, unable to finish. And Surrey come down with the defensive rebound. It's non-stop here at the sports bar. Lawrence this time getting to the rim. His uh, layup bobbles out. And Sheffield come back the other way. Adekoy, a little hesitation in it. Too strong in that situation. He's excellent at that. That little bump creates so much space for him there. And as you recall, Hunt picked up the early first foul. So again, in the back of his mind, he's tentative and wanted to challenge for that shot in the fear of picking up a second early foul. Nice pass, Wang going in, and Wang finishes with the layup. Excellent backdoor cut there from Paddy Wang, and that's where he's at his best. You know, we've seen him have these highlight plays, but if you cannot dunk the basketball, you glide through the air just like that, and a soft finish off the glass. Nice play. Here's Allen, round to Ramsey. Ramsey puts it on the floor. Out to Retino for three, and he strings it. It's a great look there, and that's all because of the point guard there, Ramsey. Surveying his options, he penetrated in the middle, which got the defense to suck in, and Retino stepping into that shot looked effortless. Well, we have seen him over the years at Sheffield knock that shot down a number of times. Shot clock getting low here. Wang throws it away. Ramsey says, thank you very much. Here's Allen. Allen pushing hard. Adekoya with the offensive rebound and putback. Good piece of presence of mind there from Adekoya to finish that play. But that's what you want, you know, a, a, a turnover. Again, Paddock Wang trying to make that cross-court pass. This time was short. Lawrence kicks out to the corner. Oh, straight for Mohamed. Wow, Abdul Mohamed. Look really comfortable. In that long range three. Pipkins, he tosses one up, and that's really high arc for two. <laughs> it's a difficult shot, and I think what I like about Pipkins as well, he hasn't forced the issue. I mean, this is a guy averaging 20 points per game. He hasn't came into this game wanting to put his shots up. He's waiting for it to come to him. That's his first field goal so far today. Hunt's picked it up in an awkward spot, gets it back to. Gooden. Gooden fires up the three, rims out. And Sheffield with the rebound. Shot clock is off. They can take the last one hit. Well, they just lost Adekoya down court. And he's able to lay it in. And a three-point play opportunity 
coming, coming, coming. 16 points to 18. Now we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Basket potentially three points if Adekoya can convert this and one. Well, you can see the visual frustration there on Louis Gardner's face, and you can't help but feel it's because of that last play, the score is really slow to get back, and then that soft foul, and that it's kind of a you've got to make your mind up, hard foul or not at all. It's good running into traffic, has to get it away, scoops it up on the buzzer, and that will count. Sorry, I've cut the gap down to one. We're at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with the second after this break. Till the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. Mackenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. We've seen this in two decades. We are basketball. We are basketball. <laughs> We are basketball. We are British basketball. Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Daniel Rattler and Amro with you. 
The Scorchers trailing uh, here against the Sharks by one. They've shot the ball better than Sheffield, but the four turnovers, Sheffield haven't had a single turnover in that first quarter. That's the only real difference between the two teams. Yeah, and usually this Sheffield Sharks team to set up like that, to look after the basketball. They're usually low scoring teams, defensive orientated, but turnovers are something that they, they limit. And Zeichel Rock onto Nichols. Kipper Nichols spinning to the rim, but can't convert. I thought he was excellent last week, coming off the bench, providing 14 points. Oh, nice shot in the uh, corner. Both coaches going to their benches here in the second quarter, having not rotated too much in the first. Stewart into Cook, who's wide open. It was a good rotation in the end from Ogan Denby, and he did enough to put Cook off. It was a good contest, and again, it's another one of those ones where Cook usually score with relative ease. Point shot is off the mark from Steele. Oh, you've got a lot of shooters on the court at the moment. Steele and Cooper. You've got Stewart as well, who'll be looking to pop up those three pointers for the Sharks. Well, if you let Cook get that deep, he's not going to miss too many of those. Well, I could look to go inside to Cook and. Oh, <laughs> he's talking again. about. Uh, shooters, Cooper's not going to uh, pass up the opportunity. He's got a couple of quick ones away, and there's a foul called as Hunt and Cook both hit the deck. Oh, you see him battling down inside position, look, already fighting for ground cover ground. And I think this one's going to be called on Hunt, which will it is. be his second. It is to both of those. Or up to inbound. Needs some help. Oh, he finds Nichols in the end, and Nichols gets a layup as a result. Oh, <laughs> you saw him curl off of the first cut through, and nice left hand finish with the readjustment there from Kipper Nichols. Lawrence. See Sheffield going more in the paint, way off the mark. Teo doesn't miss too many that far by that much. No, you're right. You've got to think of all those reps he's got up in this building. Off the mark for Kipper Nichols. Return to the Sheffield Sharks just ahead of last week's game. Let's see upside. We always talk about basketball this time of year. And Tino, nice finish from Hunt inside. Nichols gets called for the foul. Excellent two-man game there between Josh Steele and Hunt. Strong pick, and then a nice strong roll to the rim. And Josh Steele does an excellent job. Nice bounce pass. Good finish from Hunt. But the point I was about to make is Sheffield, with so many guys who've not only just been here, but been here for a number of years, and it should help them, you would think, in the early weeks of the season with their chemistry. I think so, because there's a lot of teams that, you know, brand new rosters and, I mean, we, we talk about the talent of London Lions, but, you know, they've got eight returning players. Stewart knocks down a three. You were just talking about him shooting the threes, and there's his first made of the game. Yeah, he's one of these guys that's going to, he's half an inch open, he's going to put it up. That's what he was known for in college, shooting the, from the perimeter. Lawrence around the screen. Notable that Coach Gardner left Hunt in the game on those two fouls. There is a substitute, substitute waiting to come in. Whether that's for him or not, we'll find out in the next break of play. But Cook might attack him here and try and get that third foul. He gets two points instead. Excellent play there and going right at the defender. He knows that he doesn't want to foul again. And Bennett Cook will be able to convert at a high rate if he's that deep. Lawrence, lovely jump stop, and off the glass. That <laughs> was he. Such a controlled player, isn't he? It looks like for a second he's out of control, but he's not. Excellent 
balance there and soft touch off the glass. Five of those bench points from Andrew Lawrence for Surrey. Nichols kicks out Eitel Rock for three, and he knocks it down. <laughs> oh, Eitel Rock being given the green light. Young British talent from coach Shatiba Lyons, averaging just under 12 minutes per game. It's been us. a good 12 minutes. Yeah. You watch the games, he's had an impact when he's been on the floor. Yep, and well, he's just showed us as well why you know, Atiba Lyons has to find minutes for him. Confidence to knock that one down. Well, Hunt sits down now. As Jameson returns. Sorry, did have their entire starting five on the bench before that substitution. Is uh, Jameson trying to make up for lost time? And it's turned over by the Sharks. Lawrence runs into trouble and it's eventually fouled. I think Idle Rock got him from behind. Wow. Good outlet pass there from Jameson. And... Oh, yeah, you can see. Got them all on the shin pads there. 5.23 on the clock. Surrey Scorchers trailing the Sheffield Sharks by 25 points to 31. And well, the interesting thing about this is the uh, depth of Surrey this year. And they've uh, obviously got to the point where they've put uh, five guys from the bench out on the court all together at the same time and again that can that can be a real positive for a coach in terms of saving minutes for later on but it also is more units that have got to get used to playing with each other yeah look we can uh, assess that being a, a failure last year 4 and 32 record but it wasn't without their problems and, and bad luck you know you need luck uh, in terms of players being healthy and available for you and that is what they had a limited supply last year well, this game, the first of a doubleheader in the British Basketball League today at 8 o'clock. We'll be in Bristol where the Flyers are taking on the Leicester Riders. Those two teams second and third in the league last season. And then tomorrow, another doubleheader for you. Plymouth City Patriots hosting the Sheffield Sharks as they take on this southern swing. And then at 6 p.m., Ellesmere Port Sports Village is the place to be. Cheshire Phoenix against London Lions. Don't forget, you can see all of those games on the British Basketball YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and give us a like. Just an issue with the uh, clock as they uh, come out of the timeout, resetting to 10 mistakenly. So the referees are just having a conversation. There we go. We've got it back to where it should be. Well, not quite. Well, the uh, whole scoreboard's gone a bit wonky because they've lost the fouls and the players. Somebody press control or delete, I think, Ann. <laughs> yeah, hard reset. Let's do it quickly so we can resume this action. Coach Lloyd Gardner and his assistants having a little conversation. It's, uh, it'd, be, it'd be a relief for Lloyd as well to get a couple of early wins on the board after last year. You could see... Uh, all those defeats kind of taking their tolls on it on him over the course of the year. Yeah, it's it's huge for the team, you know, makeup as well. You, you, teams believe when you win early, you believe you're a winning team, and you believe you're a good team, and that can have such a, a positive impact on what's to come. The remaining fixtures. I think Bristol were a good example of that last year. Yes, they had yes. a front-loaded uh, schedule in terms of their home games. They won a lot of games, took a lot of confidence, and really built on that through the year, yep. and ended up with their best ever finish. And it can work the complete opposite way, and maybe that was what it was for Scorchers last year. You start poorly, and you don't pick up a win, and then it's us media guys, oh, it's another <laughs> week without a win, and the, the pressure mounts up. 
So basically you're saying they want to wait to shut you up. That's, that's basically <laughs> what it is. But uh, Alan's got other ideas, by the way, as he drops in another two for Sheffield, and they're just starting to edge out. This is their biggest lead of the game so far. Here's uh, Cooper again firing up uh, another three. Allen kicks to the corner. Eichel Rock resets for three over the top and out of bounds. Well, the Surrey Scorchers trail the Sheffield Sharks 25 points to 33. We'll be right back after this break. Surrey Sports Park, Justin Robinson back out on court for the Scorchers, having uh, only played 244 in the game so far because of early foul trouble. But this, uh, you get the feeling, an important few minutes going into halftime. Down eight, they can't let Sheffield get away here. No, and you've seen Sheffield, they've been pretty aggressive there in the transition. They've been attacking the rim, and if it's not for the initial layup, it's been to kick outs for open guys on the perimeter. Jameson leaves it short, gets his own rebound. Though a little hesitation, and then he goes up. Well, that hesitation seemed to work in his favor, didn't it? Defense stopped there as well, and I mean that's what you're going to get with Jameson—the abundance of second chance opportunities. Allen. Again, they've a lot of room for Kipper Nichols. This time he takes it into the basket. He gets his own rebound and turns it into two. Wow. Man at work there, Kipper Nichols stayed with it and the strength then to put that one back. Four points now for Kipper. Robinson moves it round to Steele. Creating that extra step and lays it up. And there's that man again on the glass causing mayhem. <laughs> he's just a... He's hired to rebound the basketball and you know he was averaging 12 points and 15 rebounds per game before he got injured and having to depart the Surrey Scorchers on his last visit back in 2021 so again a guy with British Basketball League experience but a motor and a an energy on the boards that is unmatched as you say he led the league in rebounding uh, but didn't play enough games to be number one by the end of the year. Oh, it's not a great pass. Well, oh, that's a early identifiable weakness for the Scorchers. The turnovers at the moment, the turnovers have been ones where the Sharks have been able to retaliate relatively quickly. Well, Sheffield, by contrast, only one turnover in the whole first half. Robinson pleading for a foul, but... Nothing doing. Allen 
left alone, off the mark. Adekoya doing well to grab that rebound. Sheffield trying to get a double-figure lead here. Two and a half minutes from halftime. A bit of a slip there, Pipkins does well. Oh, oh incredible! Goodness! Jalen Pipkins, when things are going your way, 20 points per game so far this year, and shots like that are falling. Well, he slipped over and he was had the presence of mind to realize the shot clock was about to expire, but even better was the finish. And Adekoya doing Adekoya things there with a perfectly timed swipe. Here he is in transition. Good ball movement from the Sharks. And then they recycle. Nichols trying to back down. Hogan Degby to that little fall away that he loves so much, but that one's off the mark. Wow, it was excellent ball movement. Good rotation there from Sorry Scorcher. Didn't allow anything direct. Robinson cutting to the rim, and he's fouled. The basket will count. And Justin Robinson will go to the free throw line for a bonus. Wow, you know when you look at individuals and sometimes you just understand basketball, it's not a play where he's jumping over you or it's not a play where he's overly quick. It's just knowing how to cut. Here's another look at this. Watch Pipkins. You see, slips there. He's realized the clock is running short and he just throws <laughs> it up, but you couldn't get a cleaner finish than that. What a swish. Remarkable, the arch. There's the play just before and you know, it looks really simple in slow motion, but just the timing of everything, the timing of the cut was perfect and then he sort of looked to avoid contact from the defender. So he's able to shoot the ball off the glass. Well, the team aligns with this timeout just before halftime. 94 seconds remain in this second quarter, and I'm sure this will be about finishing strongly and trying to take a double-figure lead into the half. He'll be pleased with the 29 when he looks at the scoreboard, keeping them under 30 for the thick end of the first half here is exactly what Atiba would have been asking for at the start of the game. Yeah, I think so, Dan, and another area that he's going to be incredibly pleased by is, is his team's ability to look after the basketball. You know, sorry, scorchers haven't been able to put points on the board because there's been no you know, offensive transitions for them. Just one turnover from the Sheffield Sharks, which is suffocating any form of easy points for the sorry, scorchers. Teams making their way back out onto court. Justin Robinson ready for his bonus free throw that is about to come. Well, this is a great story. You know, Justin Robinson out the whole year. And I think sometimes when a guy is removed from, you know, the, the, the sphere is what we call British Basketball League, you, you, you forget of how dominant he was in his, in his time. It'll be really interesting to see how much of an impact he can have on this Scorchers team this year at 35 years old. Well, that was what I was about to say. The other thing is at 35, an injury like that is not necessarily easy to get all the way back, but he's put in a tremendous amount of hard work. And it's absolutely fantastic to see it paying off and him back out on court. That's a very Adekoya shot there, that little fall away off one foot, but it rims out. <laughs> I love how Jameson just snatched the board from his own teammate as well. As if, don't worry. You guard. don't get to 14.7 <laughs> per game if I let your teammates grab you a few. You do not. You do not. <laughs> Shot clock running low, and Ramsey just got caught with his hands in the cookie jar there. He just thought he could get the ball. Well, it wasn't a great handoff from Jameson. It was too loose. You want to be nice and tight. So very lucky, because that could have been turnover, another turnover there. Yeah, it was more of a flick than a handoff, wasn't it? And those are the types of turnovers too, if you know, if Ramsey's able to intercept that, it's a layup down the other end of the floor. Well, instead, it's his second foul, and uh, he sits down.
Just the third trip of the game for the Scorchers. Not really been many free throws in the game. There haven't been that many fouls, to be honest with you. It's been a very quick first half as well. Pipkins. Oh, Cook, you could see he was thinking, right, which way am I going to take him? Go left, go right. He forgot to catch the ball. You know, he's got the green light as well with Hunt. Oh, excuse me, no. Bailey. Bailey, excuse me. He had go Bailey ahead. on his back. He was licking his lips there. Yeah. Bennett Cook, he just was too quick. And there's Adekoya again with his quick hands. And there's another turnover. And these are the worst ones because you get somebody like Pipkins in transition, that's going to be the result. Yeah, you're not stopping him there. His speed, his athleticism. And you've got to do a better job. It sounds so simple, you've got to do a better job of looking after the basketball, but when you're not scoring the, the ball at a high rate, 31 points here, remember, you've got to limit your errors. Last couple of seconds, couldn't get all the way to the rim, tipped out of bounds, and that goes out of bounds for a Sheffield possession. Well, Atiba Lyons is going to draw up a play here with one second remaining. He's called, you don't, you don't get to keep the timeouts, you might as well use them, but one second when you're on the baseline is either toss it in and shoot from 70 feet or throw it 70 feet and hope somebody can catch it and shoot. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, ingenuity by design here, as you say, to have the options just to catch and shoot. Well, the uh, Sharks could have a double-figure lead if they're able to make this uh, score off the uh, inbound play. But don't forget, Thursday night, the Sky Sports game, Caledonia Gladiators taking on the Surrey Scorchers. Tickets still available. If you uh, go to the Caledonia Gladiators website, you can be there in person. If you're unable, you can join the team on Sky Sports for that one. He definitely looks like he's drawn something up here at Zeba. Let's see how imaginative he is. Well, looks like a playbook from the NFL. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> and they didn't do anything with it after all of that. Well, there you go. We're at the half here at Surrey Sports Car. Sheffield with the lead will break it all down right after this break. Till the final moment. Sloan in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? 
These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. I've seen this in two decades. A new era, a fresh start, a total reset. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. Can you believe it? We are British basketball. Lewis throwing it. Oh! oh! And there's all post a riser slapping his head top again. Legion Robertin putting a body. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that is top ten, maybe number one. Well, welcome back. Sheffield with an eight-point lead in the first half against the Surrey Scorchers and Ant. Really, Sheffield just a little bit more efficient, just a little bit more clinical. Surrey only 31 points on the board. That's the problem. Yeah, Sheffield, we, we see them sharing the basketball. Nice rotations, ball movement, 11 assists at halftime. Everything looks a lot more labored, though, for the Surrey Scorchers. They're not getting any easy uh, transition points, and everything is contested and, and hard fought by. Well, let's have a look at the numbers from that. Uh, first half and and you can see the shooting percentages not too dissimilar apart from the uh, three-point line where Sheffield have been more efficient the rebounding uh, the turnovers I guess is the thing Sheffield have got six points off those six turnovers and this is an eight-point game well that's it and it's not like Surrey coaches are throwing the basketball over the gym you know they haven't got 10 turnovers at, at half time but those turnovers have been costly and, and it's allowed Sheffield Sharks to get relatively easy points well Sheffield uh, will be pleased with the position they're in but Atiba will know that actually his team haven't quite hit the high notes that we saw probably last week in the game let's take a look at the story of the first half Sides to Retino, who has an open lane to the basket. That's way too easy. It was a deep lead to the uh, Scorchers here. Yeah, it's not Robinson exactly down the lane, finger rolls it in off the glass. Another encouraging sign up in the air. He's looking for somebody down in the low post. Jameson. Again, a little hook this time for two. Well, he was so deep. Jameson, excuse me, with that easy finish, they're overcooked. There's Lawrence wide open for three. And one thing. Certainly went deep into their bench. Uh, the um, Scorchers looking for a five that would work offensively for them, and I think they're still kind of looking for that unit as well. Yeah, well, this guy on the ball, not good, and just doing a really good job of, of creating for himself because that's what they're going to need to do. They're going to need to look for individuals now to to be able to be more creative because points are hard to come by. They can get Cooper going. You know, he's not shy to shoot the basketball. He's one for three from the floor. They've opened three pointers so far. Well, the reality is 31 points in the first half. They're going to have to get, you know, at least 50 in the second half if they're going to win this game. So it is that question of where those points are going to come from. They've got a lot of shooters. You talked about it a little bit in that first half, but nobody really taking hold of the game. No, and you're going to have to have individuals now that are going to want to step up and be counted. I think they've they've got players on the, the court that can do that. He, he's got a you know previous two-time MVP there as well. And Justin Robinson will, will surely look to be more aggressive here in the second half. But for, from a Sheffield point of view, I guess it's even uh, will say a bit more of the same. He'll be happy. I think so. They've got a mission this weekend, and that's to get two road wins. And the first 20 minutes of their weekend is, is started relatively well. I think he'll be happy with his team's performance. And here you go, Jalen Pipkins as well. I have to say, he hasn't forced the issue. He's been really patient, and as a fact, he's been, and, and as a result, he's been very effective. Well, some good action here. Let's look back at the highlights from last night's games. Room along the baseline, a tricky finish as well from Faulkner as he kisses it in. Incredible play. Roberto, oh, Anderson wasn't looking, the pass came his way. Patriots in the open floor again. Here's Joe Hart in his favorite spot. Count that for three, and they love it here at the pavilions. Oh, my, what a 
what block that is, and Walsh is down court, off the defense to offense in the blink of an eye. And it's Lawton again with a shot block. Walsh up close, almost forcing the turnover, and a slip there, and Walsh is able to come away with it, and he loses the ball. It's like a bar of soap, it's turned over again. What is going on? of errors. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Well, he we said Manchester haven't taken many threes, but there's one right on the half. And Plymouth a chance to regain the lead. Faulkner again from the near side, and he goes back to back from the three-point line. But there's another one, Faulkner with three in a hurry. Atwood across to Dusha. Nice pass. Atwood to the rim and he jams it home. Lewis. McNeil for three. Knocks it down. Ties the game at 52. Manchester by seven. Biggest advantage they've had in the whole game. Is Roberta throws his man on the floor and throws the ball through the hoop. Oh, nearly do. Yes, they do get a stop. Taylor Johnson, transition three, he's gone! And Plymouth have cut it down to a four-point game with 4.23 to go. He can get it into Roberta, trying to bully his way to the basket. He goes through the contact, and he's too strong with the finish. Well, anything bar a four-point play, you just don't commit a foul, and that will do it. The Manchester Giants have their first win of the season. Had a wide open look. Makes one more pass to corner. Third triple now coming for the Knicks. Can it go on baseline? One more pass. Johnson's made one through. And again, this guy has come ready to play as He has, yep. Picking this one out back to Ryan. Can go for a fifth three point in corner. You bet they can. This team at the moment getting the umbrellas ready. Johnson almost turning it over. Keeping the line. Goes behind the back toward Hibbert. Are you kidding me? Jordan Johnson, something out of nothing with the behind the back dime. Well, Zarian right in the corner, and again, they are unconscious from the perimeter. Oh my goodness! Del Pesh just elevated over the entire city of Newcastle with no regard for the Cheshire Phoenix help side defense. The Eagles looking to respond again, just showing them a taste of their own medicine. It's now looking to chip into deficit. Shifting and shaky, going off the backboard. This guy just putting on a clinic at the moment. Well, Ryan looking to go all the way. Goes in with a little floater right at the dying moments of the third quarter. Ari and Ryan going coast to coast for the Cheshire Phoenix. As you mentioned, it's been very close between these two teams. Neymar wide open, takes a three and responds to perfection with the train ball. No kicks out. Right, corner three. Got it! Big time three pointer. And the Phoenix. Huge <laughs> answer. Well, we have to try and get the ball inbound quickly. Well, again, they turn it over. Knicks come up with it. They have numbers here. They're gonna slow this one down, and it's gonna be a counted penny Rideau. Yeah, then he says bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheshire Phoenix bring the first defeat to the Newcastle Eagles here at the Virtus Motor Arena.
turn, watch and learn How many years been working for my son? You're a step like roller coaster. This one right here for the coach. Let's take this thing higher. Higher than you ever been. Stand tall like Everest. I mean, higher. You ain't gotta settle in. Go places they've never been. We go higher. No stop. Take it to the top even when the ball drops. My man. We are basketball. Team. It's every. We fight till the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! How can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. Mackenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and the playoff champions. have seen this in two decades. A new era, a fresh start, a total reset. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are British basketball. Lewis throwing it. Oh! oh! And there's all post riser slapping his head top again. Legion Robertin putting a body. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that is top 10, maybe number one. Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Here's uh, a reminder of the results this week in the British Basketball League. A good win for the Lions against the Flyers. Manchester and Cheshire both winning on the road on Friday night. Sheffield looking to do likewise halfway through. Coming up at 8 p.m. tonight, we have the Bristol Flyers and the Leicester Riders going head-to-head -head for the first time this season. And then another doubleheader tomorrow. Plymouth City Patriots taking on Sheffield Sharks and Cheshire Phoenix and the London Lions. All three of those games, of course, on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe so that you get notifications for all of the games and Sheffield hoping for a double winning weekend and the way they're playing right now you wouldn't bet against that Pitkins a perfect three of three for his six points they've got a lot of little bits from lots of different people it's a very Sheffield Sharks performance yeah they're doing it in a, in a team like way 11 assists to say at halftime and the ball is moving it, it, it you don't always often see that this early in the season you know you rely more so on talent than, than team chemistry but I think it goes back to your original point Dan they've got more returners that means that they've got a, an advantage over so many other teams because they're they're not having to start from scratch and Lloyd Gardner and his uh, sorry Scorchers obviously their, their uh, game plan will have been disrupted by Justin Robinson getting two fouls in about two and a half minutes in the first half he only played 541 and and he's a key piece that they've built this team around they'll be hoping he can be out there for at least 15 minutes 14 minutes in this second half yeah they haven't been great offensively and in, in, in the you know the mission there of Justin Robinson has played a part but they need to be better you know this is a, a new team that had a, a you know a, a really poor showing last year they've got a lot to prove to, to themselves and to, to everyone and, and I think more importantly to the fans you can see that the, the, the crowd is still in in full force you know despite a down year you know for the last several years so it's so important from now to show not just the performance but the fight then to to want these fans to to continue to continue to, to come out in large numbers well watching the scorchers over the years they do seem to have a disproportionate number of thrilling finishes here at the sports park <laughs> many of them seem to go against them but they go down to the wire so don't bet against them just yet as Robinson shows what he can do, not just for himself, but for his teammates, giving an easy basket to uh, Saquon Jameson. There. And obviously that's what you miss when he's sitting on the bench. You know, great penetration there from him. And, you know, instantly they've got shots to create a turnover where they only had two turnovers before that. Jameson with the steal and Wang taking it to the basket, hoping, I think, for a whistle that didn't come his way.
Tino looking for options. But what I would say is a test here for the Sharks because we remember they got up to a really quick lead against the Cheshire Phoenix and that disintegrated away because oh, I don't know a lack of focus maybe or because they allowed the other team to come in and, you, and look we've played a minute of this quarter but you know you can see the positive aura of the, the, the sorry scorchers. Jameson way short on the three but this time it's Mohammed pulling in the offensive rebound. One of his teammates giving him the reply <laughs> yeah, of the favor, dude. giving him an offensive rebound. Here's Jamison with a free lane to the basket. He almost went the circuitous route, but he was able to lay it in. That's a good finish. You know, he's had a couple you know, missed easy ones around the rim, and they can get Jamison now actively involved in putting points on the board. This Surrey Scorchers team will be in good shape. Well, they've got the first couple of scores here of this second half. Cook trying to get Sheffield's first basket, and he does exactly that. Wow. He looks so unorthodox sometimes, doesn't he? He looks like he, he's out of control, but he's not. He's so good at his you know, spatial awareness and knowing where the basket is. Nice play. Good enough to hand off. Can't lose. Ramsey kicks it back to Robinson for three, and well, did somebody open the door? That one was way off the mark. Yeah, it was. Pretty good contest there. It looked when he squared up to it like Justin Robinson was going to knock that one down, but uh, it's way off the mark. You don't see that very often from Robinson, who's a career 42.5% three-point shooter. Ramsey driving through. There's... Uh, the 10th rebound of the game for Jameson. Mohammed spinning into trouble. Did he shuffle his feet? He did. Uh, bad spacing on that occasion. If Abdul Mohammed wanted to post up, Jameson has to clear out there because what Jameson's done is coming straight down the middle and he stayed there, which means six foot ten Bennett Cook's able to come over there and make the double team to, to create that turnover. Retino for three, Ooh, halfway down but out for Jordan Retino. Robinson, he's got the mismatch here, which usually means somebody else has as well. They pass it up though and kicks over to Wang who barely hits the string. Well safe, two players diving out at it. They reset the shot clock when they shouldn't have. It's good work. Good work from uh, <laughs> Jameson and Mohammed. It was not so great if you're sitting in the front row there. These wow. little kids get great up energy close from and personal. Both of them, and hopefully no one's hurt there. And look like the, the smiles on the faces of the, of the children in the, the front row there. Look like they enjoyed it. Story to tell at school on Monday. <laughs> well, despite all that effort, because the ball didn't hit the ring and uh, the shot clock was inadvertently reset. It ended up being a 24-second violation. Oh, wow. Well, I thought Surrey had got the ball back, but it just wrestled away, and here's Ramsey wide open mid-range. And that's difficult to take, I think. You know, you've got to want the ball more than your opponent, and even more so when you're the home team trailing. Good and backs out. Fans counting down the shot clock for him. Fires up the three, bit of a heave. Well, a couple of occasions now where Scorchers are having to scramble. The shot clock winding down. Again, good defensive structures from Sheffield Sharks. Well, they've touched an absolute bullet there. Retino couldn't have more space if he wanted it. No, and well, that's his shot as well. Yeah. 45 threes, normally very proficient from it. It's uh, Jameson doing what he does, offensive rebound and put back. Oh, he's got a double-double already. Yeah, I was about to say, he's <laughs> got his double-double now. It's 11 points to go with his 13 rebounds. Wow. And here's Rutino again, getting to the rim very easily. It's a nice finish from Rutino as well, because he had a Paddy at Wang jumping out at him there. As you say, Dan, the resistance still not sort of jumped 
past him, didn't he? Robinson just nearly lost the handle, but kept it long enough to score. <laughs> How he's kept possession of that basketball, I do not know. But he did, and knocks down a jump shot as a result. Well, the substitutions are lining up because there's been no stoppage for a little while here. So one after the other, there is now, and there's a foul. On the floor, the Sheffield Sharks lead the Surrey Scorchers 45 points to 39 here. The teams are going to take a timeout, so we will be right back after this break. Surrey Sports Parks, two teams making their way back out onto court. Significant changes at both ends of the floor because of the substitutions who were ready to come in beforehand. And it is one of the challenges for coaches early season, particularly those with, you always say, oh, you want teams with more depth and all of that, but it's quite difficult to juggle the minutes and get everybody the touches that they, uh, Crave, particularly at this time of year. No, agreed, and that's part of the team chemistry is getting individuals to buy into perhaps reduced roles or specific roles. Shot clock needs to go up here. Adekoya got fouled. Did he, or was it a shot clock violation first? Well, they're going to have a conversation, are they? Because I think the referee on the baseline was calling a foul. There's definitely a foul. It's just a question of whether it occurred before the shot clock hit zero. Oh, it's a poor foul if it is. Well, they've chatted it over, and it's going to be a shot clock violation. That's a big call for the refs. Obviously, all about timing. It looked like an evident foul to us in the replay, but did it occur before or after? The shot clock violation is the question. Referee says after. Wang driving to the basket. And Pipkins fouls him, so he'll shoot two. Oh, a nice handoff there. And get out of Coyo. Maybe Kipper Nichols could have stepped in there a little bit. Well, a relatively quiet game for Wang so far, just the two points on the board. He has chipped in in other ways with five rebounds, most, most notably. I think it's a big season for him. Yeah. I think whenever you return a player and, you know, he had a good season last year, 15 points a game, seven assists, but, you know, he was on the worst performing team. And, you know, I think the, the question is, you know, would Paddy at Wang be one of those guys in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line? 
can he step up and look <laughs> they played one and a half games so far this year so it's very early to tell but it's a big season for him Lawrence with the reach round call for the foul the reaction of assistant coach Mark Dunning uh, was quite amusing in the background he had a different view of that he thought it was a clean steal you can see him there jumping to his feet <laughs> Well, I think Mark Dunning, the head coach, um, 10, 15 years ago, might have said a little more there than Mark Dunning, the assistant coach, is allowed to. I think it's fair to say. And here's Lawrence, who is fouled at the other end by Stewart, so he will go to the line to shoot him up. Oh, Stewart was really aggressive <laughs> with the closer and contest there. So much so, it was a clear and obvious foul. Steele and Cooper checking back in. Seattle Rock as well, replacing Pipkins. Well, Andrew Lawrence, of course, has had a decorated career played in NBA Summer League Washington Wizards and then spent time in Croatia Spain Greece to name a few and we saw him return back to the British Basketball League the London City Royals back in 2019 and since then sad to report it's been a played injury well injury after injury for Andrew yeah, Lawrence we just haven't seen enough of him uh, in the British Basketball League, Lawrence, he obviously had that season at Plymouth where he was out for the for the whole year. His time here at Surrey has been uh, staccato, really. Just can't seem to run a load of games. He's only played 23 games in the uh, British Basketball League. Wow. You think he's been here since 2019. That's a lot of time for not very, very many games. And he is the one where we go, well, if he can stay fit and healthy for the whole year. And the same is true of Justin Robinson. Obviously, Justin's only just had the one serious injury. But you look at that backcourt. Yeah, OK, they're not quite the 2012 Andrew Lawrence and the, and the 2016 Justin Robinson, but the muscle memory and the quality that they have in that backcourt, if they can harness that, uh, sorry, they should be in for a good year. Well, you roll the dice, don't you, with, with players like that, but it's high risk, high reward, Dan, and if they get this right, sorry, Scorchers could be a, a different team to what we have accustomed to seeing over the last several years. Time will tell. I feel like if there's a fan base that deserves a little bit of luck and a few runs of victories, it's probably this one. The Scorchers fans have been excellent uh, over recent times. They turn up every week, and as we said, they've not seen too many wins in recent years. A lot of drama along the way. <laughs> Well, they'll be hoping that they'd, they'd swap, a, swap a few of those thrilling games <laughs> for uh, a couple of comfortable wins, I'm sure. No, I, I, believe, I believe that's a, a true statement as well. Here's Adekoya, who was lively off the bench in the first half, and he's straight into the scoring action there with uh, his personal tally up to nine. Well, he's given up size there against Hunt, who's 6'9". Adekoya about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Andrew Lawrence again. Yeah, he's starting to uh, become very assertive here. And that's what winners and good, experienced pros understand. They understand when it's time to, to step up and, and be more aggressive on an individual basis. Third personal foul for Ramsey. Sees him go to the bench from a basketball family Andrew Lawrence his dad Ronaldo once scored 73 points in a division two game wow his uncle David 71 in a different game but in division two as well wow so buckets in the family it's fair to say 
Well, and he wasn't a basketball convert till late, Andrew Lawrence. He was part of the under-15 Chelsea's academy, so he was a football player. Didn't really start playing basketball till he was 15 years old. That, that switch worked out for him pretty yeah. well. I'd, I'd imagine Ronaldo had him doing a few one-on-ones in the back garden, even when he was at Chelsea, surely. Well, I don't know. Maybe the name Ronaldo just made him naturally go to football. <laughs> My dad was called Ronaldo. I think I would have given the, <laughs> the football thing a go. Good hands from Hunt to knock it loose. Diving on the uh, floor is Allen, and Sheffield come back up with it. Allen fires up from long range, and that one ricochets out of bounds. It's going to stay with Sheffield. Those are those little plays too. You just you feel like Sheffield Sharks have got the upper hand on those little scrappy 50-50 balls. And that's where I would demand the home team has to be the, the victor there. That's true. He wants to take it into the rim. I thought that was going to go up as soon as he caught it. Lawrence gets it back off the hand off the mid range. Well, he thought that was going in. You could tell from his reaction. He was headed back down court, but it came off the iron. Lawrence going to get called for the foul there. Sheffield just eight points in eight minutes here in the third quarter. Which is why their lead has diminished to only three. Yeah, I think both coaches are trying to find fives. I worry about the Surrey Scorchers five at the moment. Besides Lawrence, you know, where's the points going to come from? Adekoy is trying to get some for Sheffield off the mark. Well, my guess is wherever it comes from, it'll be the three-point line. <laughs> as far as Surrey's a concerned. Fair assumption, yeah. Even Hunt. Even Hunt is going <laughs> to fire it up and knock it down. There you go, right on you. Well, 20, over 20 years in the game now. I'm glad you've been, been listening and watching the dynamics of a basketball game because you caught it. And as you say, you had five out there. And that's your six foot nine center knocking down a three. Well, Kipper Nichols trying to get those points back, and he does exactly that. Kipper Nichols just seems so much more focused this year. You know, last game he was excellent off the bench, 14 points contributing to that Sharks win up in Cheshire. And that's a big play. Lawrence, the extra pass. Uh, Ogan Dengby down the middle, kicks out, steal for three. Ogan Dengby tips it out. Can Lawrence keep it in? Yes, he can. Oh, good hustle there. Ogan Dengby, Lawrence. Unsportsmanlike foul called. Eitel Rock and Hunt were kind of wrapped up at the free throw line. Well, I haven't seen Hunt enough to to make judgment, but he's been involved in a couple of these. Uh, oh, oh, he's a grab a shirt. Oh, yeah, he's innocent there, isn't he? Hunt? <laughs> he is, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. innocent. Here he is, the play before there. Nice looking shot as well. He looks like he's comfortable from out there. Of the state of the game. It's not a great foul. No, it's to not. give away because it's a bit of a nothing unsportsmanlike. They've got two from the free throw line and a potential to take the lead here. It's a rookie foul, isn't it, from the yeah. rookie? I'm actually a little surprised he's still on court after a foul like that. Oftentimes, the coach will bring him over to have a chat. I know a couple of those coaches. Cooper's yeah. <laughs> up the three off the mark. I think Atiba's in that category usually <laughs> as well. Here's Allen pushing hard. Let's see if Eichel Rock can make amends at this end of the floor. Allen has it now. Allen with the mid range. Doesn't get the friendly bounce. Steele with the rebound. That's a good rebound from Josh Steele. He's had a couple that just fell away from him, but he went and got that one, claimed it. Foul on the floor. Stewart with the hand check. His second personal foul. Sheffield Chuck's done a really good job of getting out to Teog and Denby. He's not had one open three point shot. We know how prolific he can be from 
the three-point line, especially in the corners. And Sharks have done an excellent job of, co of, of closing out on him and not allowing any open shots. Oh. He's uh, made 447 threes in his British Basketball League career. Goodness so they me. ought to have enough film on him wow. to know what to take away. I don't know if I've made over 400 in the gym by myself. That's incredible. That's inc so large numbers. And we, you know, we, we speak about this, but the longevity of someone like Teowog and Denby is just excellent. He's found his a niche in the, the British Basketball League, and every year he's got better and found a way to add value to his team. And Josh Steele again, fighting for the rebound. Doesn't come up with it, but encouraging signs. It's raw even here at 50 apiece. Energy from Steele. Just to uh, inform the viewers, you only made four in your British Basketball League career, <laughs> three pointers. I think only one of them's on film. It's, it's quality, oh, quality yeah. over quantity. Yeah. Yeah. Shot clock violation. Uh, end of the quarter, sorry. Violation for the uh, shots. Couldn't get that off. And a good quarter it is for the Scorchers. They pulled it all the way back to tie it up at 50. We'll have the fourth when we return. Till the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. Mackenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. Let's see this in two decades. We are basketball. We are basketball. <laughs> We are basketball. Can you believe it? We are British basketball. Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park, where the team that wins the fourth quarter wins the game here because we are level at 50 points apiece. Well, we've trailed it all game. There's been so many close encounters here at the sports park in recent seasons. And we're set up for yet another. Defense the cry from the home fans. It's an offensive foul called off the ball on Kipper Nichols. No, it's on Adequoia for an illegal screen. Oh, wow. It's a positive start for Scorchers. Early turnover there for the Sharks. It's Adekoya's second, and it's a chance for Surrey to take the lead. Good, we'll have to do it from the free throw line as he draws the foul. He hasn't had the best shooting day to day good, and it's two for eight, but I like. His game, and he's a player that can create for himself on this team, and I think he's going to be a player that's going to be given a, a larger role in doing that. 
You know, when you look at the pieces around them, they need that self-creator, someone who can score for themselves. And this is a guy that's been a scorer in Division I college, Utah Tech, you know, 17 points a game. And, you know, for the viewers at home, it might not sound overly impressive, but in college, you know, points are really difficult to come by. And anyone averaging over 15 is a, is a natural scorer in Division I. Well, for the first time since this sort of time in the second quarter, Surrey are in front. Sheffield have had the lead for the last 20 minutes. Nichols thinking about the shot, takes it, misses it. Good with the rebound. Wang kicks it out to Good, leaves his man on the floor. Mohammed in the corner, misses everything. And there's that man again, causing havoc on the offensive glass. He won't get the rebound himself, but he will keep the ball for his team. That's a really valid point, Dan. You know, when you've got someone of his ability rebounding the ball, everyone else has to be zoned in and aware of where he is, and that can cause panic on the defense. And then that occasion, it ricochets off the Sharks, and Scorchers have got 11 seconds here. Baseline out of bounds to try and increase their two-point lead. Just a bit of perspiration on the floor being sorted out before we get it back underway. Lob back to Wang. Oh, he's lost the dribble. He's not got much time to work with now. Trying to shake loose Rotino. Gets past him, throws it up. And there is Jameson again, but this time Adekoya wins the battle. Oh, excellent work from Jabil Adekoya. Sandwiched in between two Scorcher jerseys, and he comes up with the basketball. Nice drive, the up and under from Pipkins. But he can't convert. It's his first miss. He's only took four field goals. He's three for four. Six points for Pipkins. Maybe they look to, for him now to insert his dominance on the game in the fourth quarter. This is his first shot of the second half. Steals three is off the mark. Adekoya again claiming the rebound. Rotino in the corner. Off the mark and Mohamed pulls it off the rim. On another day, the Sharks would have got another nine to 12 points from Rotino. He's had some really good looks from out there. He's one for five. But they've been routine quality, yeah, quality, quality shots. shots. Shots you want him to take. Gooden is short. A third rebound in a row for Adekoya. Pipkins dancing his way and spinning it in off the glass. That is remarkable. The skill, the athleticism, the finesse. Wow. Tied at 52, seven and a half to play. Again, the home fans counting down the clock for the Scorchers. Jameson's gonna have to shoot here. And he ran out of time and he ran out of options. It's a shot clock violation. Yeah, a couple Scorcher offenses back to back there where they just look like they haven't really got much of an idea. Here's another look at this one. You can see he was looking to pass, pass on. Oh, you know what? I'll just spin it in off the glass. What's wrong with that? <laughs> He's so athletic. He has the ability to do that. Take off and glide and then decide what you want to do. But that is a high degree of difficulty finish there from Jalen Pitkins. Ramsey now at the point for Sheffield. Still locked up at 52 points. Ramsey short, a little flat. No points off turnovers for the Scorcher. Sheffield have done a good job of looking after the ball. They've only got five in total. Oh, there's a collision there. Jameson is underneath. Oh, still a bit shaken up there, Pipkins. What a pass from Abdul Mohammed there. Jameson certainly alert to the passes as well. His team have been feeding him and he's been converting. So he's got a nice, healthy-looking double-double at the moment of 13 and 15 rebounds 
Six of nine shooting as well. Ramsey, little step away, gets the three-point shot up, but Mohamed grabs the rebound. Yeah, there was a little rush there, an un uncharacteristic bad shot there from Ramsey's. Four points for him today. Lawrence being harassed by Ramsey. Mohamed again late in the shot clock for the Scorchers. He comes back out for three and he well, just about draws iron. Another offense with not much going on for Surrey. Here's Cook looking cross court. Again into the mid range and there's something going on on the rebounds. I think that foul's going to go against Jameson. That's a tough p play there. And you've got to go to Jalen Pipkins now. If I'm Sheffield Sharks, I'm trying to get him now as many shots as possible as we look to the latter stages of this game. And that's a disciplined decision there from Bennett Cook to pass out of the post. I mean, feel like he had the advantage. He certainly has the size advantage against Mohammed down low, but he made the right choice there for Jalen Pipkins to dribble, pull up, jump shot. We're all square again, Dan. Well, Jamison sits down. That was his second foul. The basket did count, but the foul while the ball was in the air. I mean, Sheffield get it from the end, and a quick foul on Robinson there. That's his third. That's one of those you think does the punishment fit the crime? It's a tough deal, wasn't it, to yeah. get scored on a thing? Oh, great move from Pipkins. Lose possession, and Jalen Pipkins again. This is the difference between a good basketball player and a star. Jalen Pipkins hasn't had volume shots today, but here he is in the fourth quarter, stepping up, making big plays. Six or seven now. Robinson fires up the three. I don't know if Nichols got a piece of that. He certainly looked a long way short from when it left the hand. Nichols wants it inside. He's been forced to come out of the key to get it. Ramsey trying to put the speed on, get to the basket for two, Devel Ramsey. That's a big play from Ramsey, and he's had a, a couple of those plays where he's trying to make a difference here in that one. Big play, big finish. Sheffield now lead by four. Four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Lawrence, little hesitation, gets him some room in the key. Will it drop? Yes, it will. I don't think Mohamed touched it. <laughs> Andrew Lawrence, softest, softest of touches there. A high arcing floater. Gets it to go. Cook spinning. Did he travel? He did, yeah. Lifted that back foot up. Yeah. Well, there are four minutes to go in the game. Surrey 56, Sheffield 58. It's in the balance. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Surrey Sports Park. Justin Robinson, Teo Ogundengbe. A lot of basketball experience between those two. Can they see their team over the line and get Surrey the first victory of the season? Or will Sheffield hold on with four to play? Here's Teo in his favorite spot. Well, those are almost automatic. But Hunt on the glass puts it back. Two excellent plays from Hunt there. The original pass out to Teo Okadenby doesn't convert, but he stays present, gets the offensive rebound and put it back. Big play. Oh, he got his hand on the ball there, Okadenby, as well. Ten offensive rebounds for the Surrey Scorchers. They've got ten second chance points from them. Jameson's the culprit there, yeah, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hunt got two of them right there. Here's Pipkins, who certainly stepped up in the fourth quarter, and he continues to do so. Unbelievable. That star watch right there. Jalen Pipkins, big play. Ramsey gets his hands on it, but just can't beat the ball to the sideline. Take Pipkins to 14 points personal now. Wang returns. Steele sits down. 3.16 on the clock. One possession separating them. Sorry, looking to tie things up. Robinson, nice pass. Hunt driving in. It's an offensive foul. I think Pipkins just got his feet outside the no charge circle. Just watch where his feet are. Can we see it? Not quite. I think he just jumped out and got there in time. The referee pointed straight to the circle to say it. See if we can see it from this angle. He's outside. What a play. Great defensive play. Pipkins, fourth quarter performance so far has been immaculate. And this time showing us game-changing plays on the other side of the floor. The other thing he did was he was up on his toes just in case because under FIBA rules, as long as you're not touching the line, it doesn't matter if you've got verticality over it. Here's Pipkins, it's not loose. Hogan Degby diving on the floor, gets it out to Robinson, stolen back by the Sharks. Oh, you see the desperation of both teams now, diving on the ground, putting bodies on the, on the line just to get possession of the basketball. Ramsey step back, straddling the three-point line, but it doesn't drop. And White with the easy rebound. Again, Surrey looking to tie things up. 2.25 to go. The pass is deflected, though. And Sheffield get it back. And both teams making errors down the stretch. Here's Cook looking for his options in the low post. Back out to Ramsey, shot clock at five. Ramsey needs to go up here, gets to the corner. He stepped on the line first. <laughs> you see the fan and the front row helping up the referee on that call. But a frustrating turnover there from Ramsey. Well, the two teams have relatively looked after the ball pretty well. But yes. Suddenly, the turnovers are a little bit more regular here in the dying seconds. And Wang, who committed the last one for Surrey, will sit back down. And now we've got Lawrence and Robinson into the game. And Gooden as well. It's a small lineup for Coach Gardner. He's just looking for creativity, isn't yeah. he? There's a lot of uh, scoring options out there, though. Lawrence, five to work with, gets to the mid-range, misses everything, and Ramsey keeps it in play. 90 seconds now to play. We're still stuck at 58-60. Surrey now into... needing to get stops here. They don't want to get two possessions behind. Retino trying to do that. He misses the layup. Hunt with the rebound. Don't understand why Sheffield Sharks aren't looking to Pipkins to close this game out. He's done very little wrong. Hunt to give Surrey the lead. Oh, it's halfway down. 
it comes back out. Wow, it doesn't come any closer than that. But I think what's encouraging the confidence for Hunt to just put that shot up. Wow. If they don't win the game, they'll look back at that and think, how did gravity go against us there? Retino for three at the other end. He misses. Robinson with the rebound. 35 seconds is still 58 60. Good. They've got a score here. There's a foul off the ball on Adekoya. No one in team fouls either. It's just the third team foul for Sharks. Well, 27 seconds remaining. Surrey will have 14 of them because it'll be a sideline ball. And Coach Gardner is going to call a timeout here. And with uh, one of his assistants, Kalen Raftopoulos, in front of him having a discussion about what play they go to here. Still quite a lot of clock to play with. They've got a lot of three-point shooters out there, which makes you think, well, maybe that's the best option. But normally in a situation like this, you say go to the rim and, and try and get the two. Don't worry about taking the lead. Just tie the scores up. I like that strategy, the latter. You know, when you're the home team, you want the game to go into overtime or you're more comfortable with the game going into overtime. I think as well, when you're the team that's sort of been trailing the majority of the, the game and you've found a way to get it into overtime as well, you've kind of got that slight psychological advantage over, your, over, over the opposition. But if I'm the home team, I just want to score the basketball, play some defense, and get an extended five minutes here. Well, Sheffield still have fouls to give here in uh, this fourth quarter. So Sheffield by three. As so, uh, so Sheffield by two even. Uh, Surrey come out. Both teams have one foul left to give in this quarter. So it might not come down to free throw shooting. It might come down to execution. Here's Hunt with the handoff to Lawrence. Oh, he's got space. Oh, he went for Hunt inside. Out of coin, did he keep that in? No, he didn't. Wow. <laughs> Nearly did. He is uh, excellent hands. Dribble out of court. We've known him. Oh, it's off the backboard. He almost has the reaction there to keep it in. So it's now eight on the shot clock. Hunt trying to hand it back to Gooden. Down to five. He'll have to go to work himself. Adekoy is not the easiest to get round. Hunt gets his own rebound, and Adekoy fouls him. That will be free throws, because that's a shooting foul. Hunt's done excellent there. As you say, Dan, Dribu Adekoy is a deceivingly excellent defender. And look at that defense, but Hunt's length there has been able to give him the advantage. Again, that's the 6-9 against Dribu Adekoy. He's about 6-6, six, 6-7. Six, six, well, he was 61% from the free throw line in the NBL last season. He's been better than that through his career. Ooh, wow. There's a home court roll. <laughs> He's been closer to 80% through his career from the free throw line. But he needs to make this one here with 11 seconds to go to tie things up. Well, once they've all set themselves, he'll have a long time to think about it. Here we go. Must make. Goodness me, what the man from New Zealand squares the game. Well, we've said it all the way through, right from the top of the show. They've seen some drama here over the years. These Surrey Scorchers fans, that's why they keep coming back. <laughs> it just seems week after week that their games come down to the final play. And this one literally is Sheffield. They can advance the ball if they choose to. I assume they probably will, because the shot clock will be off, and they'll have 11 seconds to find a basket to win the game. Well, you know where I'd want to go? I'm drawing something up here now for Jalen Pipkins. Yeah. Whether that's 
off screens of with him in the ball but with the ball in his hands and him attacking I, mean, I think what Jalen Pipkins has he has that ability as well to pull up on a dime he doesn't have to have to Sarah, he doesn't necessarily have to barrel his way all the way to the rim Sorry do have one foul to give but it's always a dangerous thing I remember seeing a game here I think you might have been playing in it were you when Jay Kuznod uh, with the Surrey tried to foul him and he just went up quick and ended up shooting three free throws and won the game. Yeah. They were trying to foul him on the floor. Well, he made some plays like that to win us a, a fair few games. Jay Kuzna was an excellent British Basketball League player. Here we go then, 11 seconds. Sheffield looking for a score to win. Scorchers fans on their feet to get behind their defense. Ramsey to inbound, Surrey with a foul to give. Pipkins going to watch the clock tick. Adekoya fakes the screen. Pipkins, has he knocked away? Nichols has it. Nichols to win it! No, we are going to overtime. A great defensive stand from the Surrey Scorchers to deny Pipkins an opportunity. And we'll have an extra five minutes of basketball. Wow, well, they got Jalen Pipkins up the top. There was a fake screen. Dribble on a Koya ran out the way to clear it out. And Jalen Pipkins went hard left but slipped, which disrupted the whole rhythm of the offense. And Kipper Nichols, whoa, wouldn't have that been a shot if he got that one to go. Well, you see, there goes out of Koya, and then he just didn't quite have his feet, but great hands from Gooden as well. Excellent hands. And as you say, Hail Mary from. Nichols uh, does well to draw iron from that situation. And we will be going to overtime for the first time this season in the British Basketball League. And it had to happen in the Surrey Sports Park, where close games are made of. Well, can they uh, find some momentum here to get things going? As I'm sort of minded back to last season, and he had that overtime game against Plymouth where it got away from them the overtime game against Manchester that they lost by one this is a new team now Daniel yeah, I, know, a new I, know, I know I know I know I know well the exciting second half they really enjoyed the competitive nature from both of them and you saw it too at the end of that fourth quarter you saw the intensity levels, the, the game's uh, beauty declined because naturally the, the intensity of the defensive end has increased. So you're a little bit more scrappy, but you know, teams, it was 10-10 in that fourth quarter, Dan, 10-10. So, you know, that just personifies that, the, the, the level of energy expended on the defensive end there from both teams. Well, the only person in real foul trouble is Jabril Adekoya of the Sharks who picked up his fourth uh, on that final uh, Surrey offense. So possession hour favoring the home team. So they will get the first attempt to score here in the extra five minutes at the sports park. Lawrence into Hunt, Ramsey almost stole it away. There's Gooden underneath, blocked by wow. Cook. Big block there, and good play again from Hunt to recover the ball, and nice little bounce pass there to Gooden, who was just undersized there, and Cook, strong play. Hunt knocks it loose. Sheffield still have it, but not a lot of time to work with. Here's Pipkins. Jab step, fires up the three, back iron. Lawrence taps it out, but only as far as Adekoya. Knocked away, but it comes back to Ramsey and tipped home by Benny Cook. Well, Ramsey's penetration there made Hunt come over and contest that shot, which allowed an open Benny Cook to put the ball back in. Hunt for three. Uh, both short and a bit left. And we're still level. There's not been too many points in the in the last uh, four or five minutes of the game. Oh, excuse me. I thought Bennett Cook scored the putback on the play before. 
He did, yes. It's just not ticked over for some reason. I'm just making sure I'm not seeing yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is 60 62. Here's uh, Lawrence trying to make it 60. Oh, Adekoya just couldn't pull that one in. Confirmation in 60 to 62 with 322 to go in overtime. Well, where Scorchers haven't seen a lot of joy down is from beyond the perimeter. The three for 24 now. That's a very unhealthy 12%. Oh, he's hot, slicing his way to the basket, and he's able to lay it in. Wow, that's a guy that perhaps they've ignited his confidence now. 15 points for, for Hunt, and five for nine shooting. Level again, 62. Pepkins loses his feet, but keeps the ball. Ramsey rolling to the basket is Adekoya, gets his man up in the air, and wants a foul, doesn't get one. Here's Robinson in transition. And it's deflected away from him for a Sheffield, uh, for a Surrey ball on the baseline. Well, you see Justin Robinson put on the Jets there. 35 years old. Pushing the basketball. Josh Steele returns, tied at 62. 2.51 to go in overtime. First period of, dare I say. <laughs> oh, what a start to the British Basketball League Big Saturday. His steal for three. Got it! Josh Steele on the bench, and he knocks down a big three for the Scorchers. Goodness me, that's huge. That's his first points of today, and boy, are they big ones. Sky Sports duty on Thursday. Now hitting big threes in the Surrey Sports Park on a Saturday. Ramsey round the screen, gets into the lane, floats it up, and he was trying to get three the old-fashioned way. Good and just sort of eased under him. It's the first foul, I believe, on Cam Gooden. Wow, this is the play before. Good recognition from Gooden as well. Extra pass. Josh Steele, that's a big one. So, Devoe Ramsey, who's not shot very well from the free throw line so far this season. One for five coming into this game, makes his first of the contest. He's an 82% foul shooter last year. And he makes them both. <laughs> Nerves of steel there from Ramsey. But Surrey still lead by one as we approach the two-minute mark in overtime. Gooden trying to get down the lane. Gets all the way to the rim and finger rolls it in for two. Gooden's got that ability, isn't he? He's like a natural. Scorer weaves his way in there. Nine points now for him. Pipkins around the screen. Fires up the shot. Back on, gets his own rebound. Pipkins throws it back in for two. Oh, Jalen Pipkins continues to make big plays. Leading all scorers. 16 points for him. Robinson gets it. Oh, it's stolen away by Ramsey. Ramsey will run it back. Gooden will chase him down, but he won't stop him. And Sheffield are ahead. Wow, it's a big play, isn't it? Devell Ramsey always active. And his foot speed, you're not going to catch him. Well, Gooden wasn't too far away, to be fair. Ramsey was able to finish. Robinson round the screen. Gets his defender up in the air. Will that bobble in? No, it won't. Hunt trying to keep it alive. So too Ogan Dengby. But Sheffield get it back. We're in the final minute. Defense again, the cry from the home fans. Ramsey. Out to Nickel. Shot clock down to five. Ramsey has it. Ramsey. Over to Retino, it's got to go up. 
Pipkins right at the death of the shot clock. Could knock it down. Broken up by Rotino and out of bounds. They're really trying to feed that ball through to Hunt. I think they like and trust his ability to make the right decision. That was almost a turnover, though, in their attempt in doing so. 22 seconds to go in overtime. 15 on the shot clock. And Surrey once again in a position where they have to draw off a play, but this time a good play could win them the game because there's a one point differential between the teams rather than two. Well, Lloyd Gardner, he's been through the mill today, hasn't he? And he's had to come up with some big plays late in the game. They managed to get a situation that allowed them to tie it at the end of regulation. Can they find a way to winning it here? And again, in this situation, any sort of score is a good score, but going to the basket brings in the ability to, to win it from the free throw line. Yeah, and I think you're, you're in an instance now where you'd take anything, even the, as you say, a, a drive to the, to the rim which could Get you some free throws. You just can't come up empty. You know, time is against you now. Yeah, they have to score because Sheffield will get the ball back. And uh, if they have the lead, they won't need to do anything but wait for a foul. Teams out on court. It's an end-line ball that good will inbound for Surrey. It's into Lawrence. Here comes Robinson. Oh, it's an offensive foul, a moving screen on Teo Ogan Dengby. Just what the Scorchers didn't need. Mm, that's a tough one. And that's from the team captain as well. I'll have to see that one again. It's just off the right corner oh, oh he's back into it yes yeah it's a good call now they need to foul quick and they do foul quick and it's Jalen Pipkins who is fouled and who will go to the free throw line well he wasn't in British basketball for long last year 15 games he played only 25 free throw attempts last season you know how many he made how many 21 wow that's a pretty good percentage Two here, puts his team on the break, but not out of sight. He's been excellent as well. Fourth quarter onwards. I mean, he's good throughout the rest of the game, but he didn't force shots as well. He let the game come to him, and that's a sign of maturity, but also a, a, a sign of a star. Well, Sheffield have barely been at the free throw line today. This is only their seventh attempt of the game, but he makes them both. So he need a three to force a second period of overtime. Sheffield could technically foul, doesn't look like they're going to. Good, creates room to tie it. No, back iron, it's batted out. Robinson, no, off the back of the rim, and Surrey have their hearts broken again in overtime by the Sheffield Sharks. Two good looks at forcing a second period of overtime. Neither drop for the Scorchers, and it is Sheffield who will leave Guildford with the points. Wow, and the fans, you see them applauding. Their team had to fight and scrap to get back in that game and force it to overtime and had a shot to tie it all up. But it wasn't meant to be today for the Surrey Scorchers. Well, it was a great game, a lot of good performances in that. And who was your player of the game? Player of the game, Jalen Pipkins. He was excellent. He was the individual that we wanted to highlight before because of his stellar performance so far this year, 20 points per game. Today, he had 18 points and a number of big plays down the stretch for the Sheffield Sharks. He willed his team over the line, both ends of the floor. Let's not forget that big defensive play taking the charge. Jalen Pipkins, superstar status.
Well, I think he had 10 of his 18 in the fourth quarter in overtime, really stepping up when his uh, team needed it. And Sheffield, well, it was hard fought, and they've got another game to come this weekend, but they've got a win on the board. Let's have a look at the numbers here. And, and actually, the turnovers in the end didn't appear to be as big a problem as they were going to be uh, in the longer term. Either team shot uh, the three-point very well, but Sheffield, uh, you know, they didn't get to the free throw line either. It's almost, you look at the numbers and you think, well, Sheffield, how have they won this? Well, it's a three-point game. They're about to be close. Neither team shot the ball very well. We've got the kind hearted Dan yeah. Brownless. They shot it terribly, Dan. Yeah, it's yeah, awful. Yeah. So the three-point is 14% for Surrey, 22% uh, from Sheffield Chuck, just four three-pointers apiece. Um, you know, to put that into context, under, anything under five is, 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 is really below average. Uh, Below par, but Josh Steele with a big one down the stretch to remember. Um, you know, it was as big as they come. Well, don't forget, this is the first of a doubleheader. Bristol Flies, Leicester Riders tip off in an hour's time here on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. So join us for that. And tomorrow, a doubleheader shots back in action at Plymouth and Cheshire and London Lions go head to head. Well, I'm sure you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.